Hello and welcome to Too Many Movies, the podcast where we discuss DVDs, Blu-rays, and even the occasional VHS tape. I'm your host, Hal, and with me here today, Biff, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm I'm Biff Weed. You might know me from the times I've talked about Mario Kart or One Punch Man, and probably not anything else of note that I've dedicated my entire channel around. <laughs> That's one way to put it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we we watched some we watched some animated masterpieces, one genuinely and one ironically. Yeah, this has been an interesting week for me watching. Well, this has been an interesting week because uh, we just celebrated Thanksgiving here in the Americas, and uh, I was watching Freebirds all week. I I don't know if. <laughs> I told you this, but like I watched Freebirds like three different times in the past week. So I, I saw that every time I would wake up and check my letterbox feed, it'd be there again. Yeah, it, it wouldn't go away with it like a bad smell. It wouldn't go away. Uh, well, it's okay. We're here to talk about a different holiday movie uh, to start things off. You made us watch Eight Crazy Nights, you crazy bastard. Uh, <laughs> Several times. <laughs> this is my sixth time watching it. I just finished like an hour ago. Sixth time. Wow. I mean, listen, I've probably seen the Nostalgia Critic Review six times, um, but I've only <laughs> ever seen the movie officially twice. Uh, once a couple years back. I don't remember why. And then because just, of me, I think. maybe it was because of you. And then just recently, just yesterday, in fact, yesterday being Black Friday, I watched it with uh, my friends. We watched it together um, and it was uh, miserable, <laughs> to say the <laughs> least. Uh, look, I know you're you love this movie, ironically. Like this is one of those. This is like one of those movies. That, you know, every, every, we all have those movies that we just ironically enjoy we love to just like make fun of or we love to watch every year just because of how bad something is or how fun something is to us and they're not necessarily good but you have a good time regardless i get that yeah. i don't get it with this movie but please uh explain explain a little bit i guess what what, what are your thoughts on eight crazy nights all right so uh the thing about this movie is that my um, entire like ironic obsession with it? I don't even like the movie. <laughs> like, um, I knew it. I fucking knew it. You like, fraud. I, I love I love guessing the movie up, uh. Uh, but I don't actually like the movie. <laughs> um, like um, so, basically to give some some context, my friend Max. He's a he's a huge uh, Adam Sandler fan. Sometimes genuinely, sometimes ironically. And back in like 2019, when I first joined the group of online friends that I'm in now, uh, Eight Crazy Nights was a movie that would be brought up a couple times. And a couple months later, um, I decided to to finally watch it and like live message them my reactions. Turns out Max hadn't even seen it, despite how many references he made to it. But um, it just became an obsession with this movie. Like I was so fascinated by it. Um, I, I I love and hate it in equal measures, basically balancing out to a movie that I'm like completely neutral on, ironically. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so from then on, um, I think I watched it again the year after, after like shortly after lockdown started, I want to say. And then the year after that, I thought, hey, wouldn't it be funny if this was my first movie of the year? Uh, and then... The year after that, last year, um, I made it my last movie of the year, I think, besides Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Uh -huh. And this year, I watched it back in like August, September for a project that may or, not, it may, or may not be coming out in December. And then uh, I watched it again today for this. So those are all six times. And I'm like, you know what? I'll, I'll watch it once a year, every year. Why not? That sounds funny. <laughs> I mean... Again, I get that. You know, there's always those movies that you love watching, ironically. Like I just said, I watched Freebirds three times in the past week. So I'm not one to judge somebody who finds something that they love gassing up ironically. I just, I just don't get it with this movie, man. Like, and that's the thing. That's the frustrating thing, though, is like, um, I don't know if you've watched like Oni Plays, the, the channel not much no. okay well i highly recommend it. i'm not even much of a gamer i just love having listening to their let's plays as like background noise um but like they love referencing this movie a lot 
and they love just making <laughs> jokes about it. Like Chris Oni and G, Chris, he 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 does the voice of Whitey all the time, where he's just like Eleanor, and he just like makes up these jokes about this movie. They also gaslit me into believing there's actually a line during the uh, song number where the logos come to life and they're like berating uh, Davy to like cry over the death of his parents. You know, the one where it's just like, we yeah, all heard yeah, what happened one. at the <laughs> skating rink today. Yeah. And so like they gaslit me into believing there's actually a line in that song where Davy goes, ah, shut your fucking gab. And I'm like, that's a hilarious. <laughs> and as I was rewatching the movie, I was like, oh, he doesn't even say that. He says like, shut your wooden mug or something stupid like that. And I'm like, <laughs> Even when they're making fun of the movie, it's a lot funnier than the actual movie. <laughs> like, you know what else is funnier than the actual movie? Um, when uh, when Doug Walker was reviewing it, he had to for one of his criticisms, he had to take it out of context to like try and make a dig at it. Like um, during the song at the end, where Davey's trying to convince the townspeople to like give Whitey the patch. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like, so they get to the line. Um. Uh, I was such a shithead, but he never quit on me. Uh, and Doug pauses pauses it and says, um, except for the part where he did give up on you, but why bring any part of logic into this now? Yeah. The literal next line in the song is, Till I told him he was useless and his sister was freaky, saying that he did give up on him after a point. <laughs> so oh, so Doug had to take oh, this movie out. It's not a difficult movie to criticize, Doug. No, what are you doing? No. no, because Doug was doing just such a bang-up job when he was criticizing it. Like, I just watched the video today, even. Uh, like, so I watched... I watched two videos. I watched the Oni Plays Best of Eight Crazy Nights uh, references, so, which was <laughs> which was twenty minutes long. Um, and Jesus then I Christ. and then I watched the Nostalgia Critic review because that's a Nostalgia Critic classic. Like when I think Nostalgia Critic review, I do think Eight Crazy Nights. Like that was one of my earliest ones I remember watching. Um, and yeah, like no, he. I mean, he can be. I'll be honest. Even though I fucking hate this movie, he can be a little harsh towards Adam Sandler as a person in that video. And it's like, I get it. It's a bad movie, but he's just like, oh, Adam Sandler, he's not actually that fit. Look at this picture of him at the beach where he's a fucking fat ass. And it's just like, Jesus Christ, oh, dude. like that's kind of messed up. And then there's that one scene where he goes on for like five minutes where he pretends to call Adam Sandler. And he's like, who was that angelic voice who voiced Whitey? Oh, and like Rob, Rob Rob Walker as Adam Sandler is like, ah, you're not going to believe this, but it was me. And he's just like, fuck Mel <laughs> Blanc. You are so great. I wish Mel Blanc was fucking rotting in hell. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ. Jesus dude. Christ. <laughs> like, again, they're all jokes, clearly. But at the same time, it's just like fucking Christ, Doug. Like, pull it back just a little bit. Like, I hate the movie, too, but not to the point that I'm like wishing death on Adam Sandler. I don't particularly like other Adam Sandler movies either. Like I said. I fucking hate this movie, but like, you know, not to that extent, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you know how like really rough early YouTube reviewers were like they were yeah. super like over the top and like to an extent you could make the argument that that was part of the joke, but like some people took it literally, you know, like. I don't know. It it really felt like sometimes they took their criticisms really seriously to the point that when they're just like screaming their fucking heads off, it seems genuine when it's like, dude, yeah. it's a movie. Like, yeah, I can't <laughs> imagine getting that heated over a movie. Like, even on the rare occasions when I do end up hating a movie, yeah, uh, I, I watch it and think, wow, that was that was really bad. Anyway, so I'm going to move on with my life. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I completely... I do have those movies that just fill me up with so much rage, but, like, not to the point that I'm just, like, going to ruin my life over it, you know? Or, like, not to the point yeah. where I'm just going to, like, go on this podcast and be like, fuck you, you fucking degenerate, fuck you. I guess maybe the most heated I ever got was in my... Uh, second Halloween episode. I did. I did tell uh, Rob Zombie to go fuck himself. But like, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think Rob Zombie listens to my podcast, so I think I'm good. <laughs> you know? I also think that's like pretty tame compared to what other reviewers have said about other filmmakers. True, true, true. There is. A, uh, I. Oh, what what video was it where our nostalgia critic like makes a joke where he goes to like Happy Madison production and he bombs it? Was that because I I thought it was in the Eight Crazy Nights review, but then it never happened. Was it the Master Jack of Disguise? 
No, was it the master disguise? Because this was like an older. It had to have been like an older video, because like that was when like the uh, cheesy effects were like charming rather than kind of sad. Um, I think it was the master disguise video. He like screams and he just like the joke is that he runs like to Happy Madison production and he just like pl- he just like it's like a. Uh, Photoshop Wait, is it picture. that the funny GIF? Hold on, I'm gonna post the GIF. You can well, I, tell me. Oh, I, I know exactly one. the GIF you're talking about. Uh, do I have? Do I have it saved to my favorites? Please tell me I have it saved to my favorites. Oh, that's a. Um, where is it? <laughs> oh no, have I lost it? Have I lost it forever? I know which one you're talking about. The one with like he's like running towards the camera with like the bat, and he starts hitting the camera with the bat. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm talking about the one where, like, he throws something in a door, slams it like a cartoon character, and then runs away with, like, the sonic legs, like, the, oh, the circular, spinny sonic legs. That's from a commercial video. I should know because I binged the commercial videos recently. Like, that's where he sh- he throws, like, that, um, oh, what was it? It was, like, that, uh... The video game composer who's like he got he apparently he got like a video game composer onto his show and he just like throws him in a rocket ship and like runs away. Yeah, he has the fucking sonic legs. <laughs> it's not coming up. I can't I can't find it. God damn it. Oh, that's that's a modern classic. That's a modern Doug classic. <laughs> <laughs> well, that just shows you like how bad A Crazy Nights is. We're talking about Nostalgia Critic over talking about A Crazy Nights. <laughs> uh, true. I mean, I'd take any opportunity to talk about the Nostalgia Critic. Me too. Beloved. Me too. I love Nostalgia Critic. We're, we're I, devout Dougists over here. I, I hadn't watched his stuff in years, but um, I actually did go back to his um, Bay Turtles uh, mm-hmm. videos after I watched those as part of my my binge of the Ninja Turtle movies back in the summer. Yeah, and honestly, those 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 videos hold up pretty well. I think. Yeah, I think they're genuinely entertaining videos. His like nostalgia critic reviews. Like obviously, yeah. sometimes you get like obviously yes, he did do the wall video, which I will never forgive him for. Like that was just an awful, awful video. Like it was a weird nostalgia critic video and an awful criticism of the movie. But I've already I already went over that in my the wall episode. Um. But, like, occasionally he does make a lot of great points. I will defend Doug Walker as not that bad of a creator. He's not the best creator. He's made a lot of mistakes over the years. But I would never, like, go as far as to say he's one of the worst creators to ever come onto YouTube. Like, that is... Holy shit. Like, if Doug Walker was the worst uh, YouTuber, YouTube would be doing pretty fucking good, I must say. (laughs) Like... Even my favorite YouTubers have made some fucking terrible videos in of their course. time. Yeah. So like, I don't expect anyone to be perfect all the time. I, uh, like, especially like having made some real shitty videos myself. Yeah, exactly. We all make shit from once in a while. Like Adam Sandler, who made Eight Crazy True. Nights. And speaking like, of shit, remember the all important deer eating shit scene in Eight Crazy Nights. Yeah. Honestly, as gross as gross as that is, um, I'm I'm happy it's there solely because of the letterbox review that I think from like Adam Bolt or something, where it's like Adam Sandler with tears in his eyes. No, the deer shitting scene has to be in the movie. <laughs> well, that's the thing is like there's a deer shitting scene where like you just see a bunch of deer like laughing and shits coming out of their animated buttholes, and then you have a scene where Whitey gets like he so he's like cleaning to- uh, porta potties. Adam Sandler's character Davy pushes him into a porta potty. It falls down the hill. Whitey comes out covered in shit. Adam Sandler then takes a hose, sprays him with water. He freezes over, and then a bunch of deer come over, start licking him out of his prison, his icy prison. And then they have shit in their teeth. It's just like wow, the the, the poop and deer jokes, man. They're so varied in this movie. <laughs> Yeah, but after after the dreaded port potty ride, I can't believe it. I just um, yeah. yeah. Sometimes the beautiful animation can work against it because it makes all the weird like gross sweat and body hair and shit jokes just look that much worse. Well, that's the interesting thing is that this is from, if I'm not mistaken, the same like I don't know if it's the same studio or some like a bunch of animators from like it. This movie has a connection to the Iron Giant. Um, yeah, overlapping production staff. Overlapping production staff. Yeah, exactly. So like, and you can see it in the style. Like, it looks a lot like the Iron Giant. Um, yeah. You know, the Iron Giant, that masterpiece, that amazing movie, animated movie that people love. People love the Iron Giant. And then yeah. they also made Eight Crazy Nights. Like, it's just. Like- night and day comparing the two you know 
Yeah, like it, this obviously isn't as good as the Iron Giant, but like <laughs> the frustrating part is that it could have been. I can see a really good outline for a story and great messages buried underneath an Adam Sandler comedy. Well, that's like, a, if it, yeah. If, if it committed to, to like a, a more serious tone and didn't use like not being for kids as an excuse to be really juvenile and excessive in ways that kids' movies can't, I think it could have been really strong and emotionally powerful, but it was too busy shitting over itself to do that. Well, that's, yeah, that's the interesting thing. So obviously, this is one of the very few Hanukkah movies ever made. Um, you know, like, yeah, I think I agree. I think there should be more specials for other holidays and not just Christmas. Like, as much as I love Christmas specials, and I love Christmas specials, I love that's one of my favorite parts of the holiday season is just sitting down and watching every Christmas special I can get my hands on. Even the shit, like the shit I've seen, the shitty holiday specials I've seen over the years are terrible, but I love watching them because they're so much fun. There's just something interesting about them. Um, but like, yeah, I, I think there should be other holiday specials, uh, you know, cause it would be interesting to see, like, see like what people, what other cultures can get out of watching like these weird specials. And like, Obviously, there's going to be some bad ones, obviously, because Eight Crazy Nights was a piece of shit. But, like, I feel like there should be at least some good ones because there are some genuinely good Christmas specials, you know? Like, it's not all shit. <laughs> um, so, and it's just a shame because this is one of the more popular ones. Um, you could probably make an argument that maybe, like, Uncut Gems is, like, a better... Well, it is a better... It's a better movie. It's a better Adam Sandler movie, and it's a better Hanukkah movie because Hanukkah's a part of it. Um, Very bold take of you there. I know. Bold take. Uncut Gems. Better than Eight Crazy Nights. Hey, I, I'm, 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 he, I'm the brave one here by saying that. Like, I, it's not easy being brave, let me tell you. <laughs> this is how you win. Yeah, this is how I win. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wasn't as crazy over on Cut Gems as a lot of people, but I still think it's really, really good. So oh it's God. just not really my thing. Uh, yeah, it is not for everybody. I love Safety Brothers movies. I love Good Time. I love Uncut Gems. So I'm, I, yeah. but I totally get they're not for everybody. Um, but yeah, like you said, there is something there. Like, yeah, the the whole. I mean, when you really look at it on paper, it's the whole like, oh, this curmudgeonly character is depressed around the holidays. And he needs to learn to be joyful around the holidays. Like, that is literally every holiday movie ever made. Like, that, that, like, literally every holiday movie, you could break it down. And it's pretty much just that. Like, some asshole yeah. is being an asshole and he learns to not be an asshole because of the holiday season. Like, that, that explains literally, like, if not every one of them, 99% of holiday movies. So, yeah. Just the Grinch, really. <laughs> yeah, well, well, the Grinch, yeah. But like, but that's what I'm saying. Like, it's just very common. It's a very common storyline. Um, but like, this movie just doesn't know how to convey that because let, let me like this is a cla not only is this a classic holiday, uh, movie trope to have like your main character be this like dickhole like main character, you know. Other movies are like that. You know, I, when I think of, like, asshole main characters, I think of stuff like Emperor's New Groove or Cars or Ghostbusters or, like, yeah. stuff like that where, like, the main character is kind of a piece of shit. But, like, as the movie progresses, you start to learn that, like, they can change as a character and they're not they're not as big of an asshole by the end. Like... And I feel like that's what this movie's attempting. This movie's attempting that because, you know, that's what a Christmas Carol is. Like, the Christmas Carol is one of the quintessential, like, asshole main character stories where Ebenezer Scrooge, like, learns to become a better person after the horrible person he was. That's supposed to be what Davy's going through. He's supposed to be this, like, unlikable jerk that, yeah, he's unlikable, but at least he's entertainingly unlikable. But they don't even do that yeah. because every time he's a piece of shit, you're just like, wow, he's a piece of shit. And the way they try to make you sympathize with him is they're like, oh, by the way, his parents died. Feel bad for him now. And you're just like, uh, no, <laughs> like, absolutely the fuck not yeah. at all. I, I guess, like, it, you can see how he would become emotionally stunted and stuck in that, like, emotional rut, but it's still, like, I feel like there are other ways it could have been done better, either like 
by showing that earlier on, maybe, or just mm. by not having how much of an asshole he is directly harm other people in his local community as much. I mean, it's a comedy. Like, if you're going to have him be a jackass, like, do it in funny ways. This movie's not funny. Like, that's something, like, when I was watching it with my friends, like... James Shafrillis Productions, every time something happened, he would go, wait, was that a joke? Like, <laughs> we were confused. We're like, what the fuck is happening? Like, I th was this a joke? Was that supposed to be a serious moment? Like, we could not tell where the jokes were because they were so poorly written that, like, we were like, are we supposed to laugh? Because we're not laughing. None of this is funny, like, at all. Yeah. The one, the first time I laughed at the movie, like, I genuinely had a reaction to laugh was, like, 20 minutes in when, like, they're at the basketball court and Whitey, like, goes to, like, shoot a basketball and some guy, like, slams it into his face. <laughs> like, that was I the first it. time in the movie that I actually laughed at the movie. Like, genuinely, I genuinely found something funny. But that was like what twenty minutes into the movie. It's like that's <laughs> that's not a good thing. If I'm laughing for the first time twenty minutes into a comedy, yeah, no, it's, the, the movie's sense of humor isn't great. Like it is worse. It's downright just horribly mean spirited and potentially offensive. Uh, oh, there's some stuff in yeah. this that has. Uh, I'm not uh, Rob Schneider is the is that is the restaurant uh, owner or waiter or whatever he is. Yeah, uh, he's the Chinese no. waiter, and he's just doing just the he's doing the exact he's doing the exact voice you can picture in your head. I'm not going to do it because I don't yeah. want to be canceled on Twitter.com. <laughs> uh, I think it's X.com. Yeah. Oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> X.com. <laughs> yeah, no, I think like there are like a sparse, like genuinely few funny jokes here and there, but. Mm. The problem is they're the ones that aren't emphasized as much so they're no. not, not the ones that stick in your mind like um what, one of my favorites um what, one of my favorites on ironically is when uh david like spills the the french fries in a way that makes them read bite me and white he just bluntly says i can't read oh i kind oh. i kind of liked that i completely forgot about that scene yeah that was also another scene we pointed out we're like oh wow a genuine joke they're so rare in this movie. We're like, hey, that's pretty funny because you can't really do that mm. in, in in live action. So it's like, hey, we see a reason why this was animated. But that's about yeah. it. Like, like it, there's like this is this movie is a desert of unfunny. And occasionally you're coming across like a grain of sand of funny. Like, that's how yeah. it's not a good balance. Whether we find these funny things in there, it's not a, a good enough a balance for us to really like take it seriously and like say it succeeds and what it was trying to do um for me i think there's enough also like ironically funny bits stuff that me and my friends have mean to where like i can get enjoyment out of those like um during the bum bitty song oh. uh, there's the guy doing the thing in kick dance with his legs just like kicking across the screen don't know what that's about in the middle of this like cultish dance that everyone's doing. Oh but, yeah, when Steve God, it delights me. <laughs> when Steven Spielberg is like doing that like kicking dance, yeah. Which yeah. that guy does look a lot like Steven Spielberg. It wasn't him voicing him because we looked it up. I didn't see anything that said Spielberg was a part of this. So um I guess it was just a funny reference or whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't know what was up with that, but it, it made me do a smile. It's so like nonsensical yeah, in a way yeah. that actually works for me. Well, let's talk about the bum bitty 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 bum bum song. Like that's the like because earlier a couple months ago, like that became a bit of a meme, uh, especially yeah. in my circle of friends. Like we we you know how Discord allows like us to put like little sound effects on Discord uh, servers now. I'm yeah, all too familiar. Yeah, like. We we added. I think it was James. I think James did that. He he added in the bum bitty 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 bum bum sound effect like in the <laughs> in our server, and it was just, <laughs> and it's just because it's just such a like that one scene. Like we've just been quoting it all like these past couple of months. William will just bring it up and just like play it while we're watching a movie together, and it's just so it's it's so funny out of context. And like as we were watching the movie, we were like so devoid of any enjoyment that by the time it like popped off like when it actually when the guy actually started singing like bum bitty 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 bum bum <laughs> like we all started clapping we're like fuck yeah finally we're here <laughs> something we actually recognize fuck um i i like that song honestly like you i i think it's just a, a nice catchy well-sung song like on its own but i, I think agree. 
it, it's one of like the few actually decent character moments for Davy in the film because mm-hmm. like that's like he's gone through his arc. He's finally like after being a complete asshole, now he's finally doing something selfless in service of someone else who's like shown him kindness i think that that's kind of nice it's like as good of an emotional beat as you're gonna get in the movie yeah but even then like i don't think it succeeds because like again the whole movie has been building up to this one scene but i don't believe that davy would actually do this like at too little too late unfortunately for him to like do something selfless quote unquote because like well also the other thing is that like uh you know, Whitey just gets up and leaves when he realizes he didn't win. It's like, all right, how selfless was this dude? Like, he's just getting up and leaving because he didn't win enough, didn't win a fucking award. Like, I think that one's more a case of like he thought he would finally be recognized after the town treated him like shit for so long, only to find out no one really cares. They don't even notice him leaving. Yeah, I think I think that much. I think him like being crushed at that. I think that's fair. I guess, but at the same time, it's a patch. Like it's it's a piece of cloth. At More than what the patch represents to I him guess, personally. Yeah, I don't know. I I've just I've never been one to believe in like you know putting value in something as meaningless as like an award like that. I don't know. Maybe that's mm-hmm. just me and my pretentiousness being like like seeping out of like my pretentiousness of how much I hate the Oscars like seeping out into other <laughs> award shows, but like. I don't know. I I can see the argument, though. I I get what you're saying, though. Um, Yeah. Not saying this one moment saves the movie, though, either. (laughs) Oh no, it doesn't. I I don't. I don't think this is a good movie as much as I enjoy pretending like it is. It's not. Well, that's the thing. Is like, yeah, I wanted to have fun with this movie, but actually watching through it, I was like, man, this is miserable. Whereas, like. I feel like I get way more enjoyment out of the Nostalgia Critic Review. I get way more enjoyment listening to Oni plays and, like, hearing them, like, make fun of this movie and, like, make jokes where they're just like, ah, shut your fucking gab, or, like, or, like, (laughs) uh... Or even just watching the bum bitty 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 bum bum scene, just watching that one scene, or that one remix. It's like a... There's, like, a remix of the song, like, going along with... I believe it's a Deltarune song, um... Oh, where they remixed like a Delta Rune song with the bum bitty 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 bum bum song, and it's just the funniest fucking thing because we always watch it all the time. I I fucking love that video. I'm obsessed with it. I love just I'll finding send it over. It. I'll send I it got, to you. I'll, yeah, I'll listen to it after the after the recording. Yeah, it's like a minute long, but it's pretty good. Um, I must say. Um, but yeah, no, I just I I I understand the appeal to it ironically but i can't get anything ironically out of it like like i was saying the ir the ironic enjoyment i get from it is from other people like or from uh like the most fun i had watching Mm -hmm. a crazy nights was us as a group making fun of it like there was just nothing for me to get out of it from it as a movie you know yeah totally fair Mm -hmm. like i think for me um, the things really propping it up are like um, the ironic uh, comedic value, uh, the beautiful animation for the most part when it's not being gross, mm-hmm. and um, honestly the music. I think like five, uh, four or five out of the six songs are pretty damn good, and mm. the score is the score is really nice. I I, I really love the score in the movie. Mm. I will say technical foul. I love quoting that from that's time my to favorite. Time. That's technical my favorite. Technical foul. <laughs> I think that um long ago song that could have been like a legitimately beautiful duet if it did not have those like shitty non sequitur jokes in it. I think it, yeah. I still like it as it is, but God, you were so close. You were so close. The first I also, time I had sex was on a phone. Yeah. <laughs> I also really, um, I, I like the basketball scene as well. Like, um, Davey and the kids, uh, like, up until they, they start eating the, the nut strap. Mm. Um, but, like, the actual basketball game itself, where, like, Davey's bonding with the kid and, like, teaching him how to play and, like, echoing what Whitey did for, for him, like, passing on his, his basketball talent to the next generation i guess that was that was nice i'm making it sound better than it actually is <laughs> describing it like that it's not amazing it's just it's charming it's fun i like it like as far as few scenes like that are are really genuinely enjoyable to me have fun eating that nut strap biatch yeah <laughs> <laughs> benjamin 
Benjamin. <laughs> it's just like I, that scene. You know what? I agree. Like that scene could, in theory, be pretty charming. Um, I just didn't get anything out of it because again davy's a genuine asshole and also he's like this big shirtless man tell- talking about like dribbling balls next to this shirtless little boy and i'm just like uh i'm way too immature to say anything about this scene i should i should I, I, you should not be showing this scene to me in my immature sense of humor <laughs> i think um i think maybe partly why davy doesn't entirely fall flat to me is that he's kind of showing what like grief and isolation can do to people during the holiday season when everyone else has people around them sure uh and he's like they show just how much worse off he has it than everyone else like everyone's living in their houses he's living in his shit a little trailer that gets set on fire <laughs> yeah with, with by the jockstrap guy who because the uh the character design is so poor on him. He has to still have his jock strap in his yeah. mouth to show you who the guy is. And you're just like, oh. why is he still eating? Yeah, why is he still eating it? Like he could have sped it out, but like us as an audience wouldn't know who that is. Or like, yeah. it's just such a weird animated moment. Maybe um, he was enjoying it. I don't. Know. <laughs> yeah, maybe um, maybe he wanted to lose so he could chew on the fat guy's yeah jock strap. Mm. Get Matt Pat on that. Get, get, yeah, get Matt Pat theory. on that film theory. <laughs> uh, I. Um, yeah, I, I also, they didn't press charges against him. He just kind of got away with it. Yeah, he kind of got, yeah, at the very least, at least Davy was almost getting arrested at times in this movie. Yeah, jockstrap guy never got arrested. Like, do they, I, I, hmm, I, don't think about it, I guess. Like, <laughs> you're not the, supposed the to judge think about character, it. The, the judge character made sure we knew uh, how long Davy had been not getting arrested for that. That exposition in that like yeah. trial scene was painful. Oh, it was so bad. Judge exposition over there. <laughs> yeah. Whitey, here's your entire life story. You used to play basketball for the Jewish Community Center. You were so good at it. It's just like, wh- why are you saying these things? Can you stop? Like, <laughs> like... Yeah, that feels like it was like two rewrites away from being like naturally worked in exposition. You but could, as it is, it's like the clunkiest. Yeah, there's easier ways to get across that for sure. Um, but that would require writing it to be smart, um, which they don't want to do. So, <laughs> you know, it's interesting because, like, you're saying, like, the whole, like, oh, Davy's going through grief around the holidays. And it's like, yeah, I can sort of get that. I think because it's dealing with such a heavy topic, that being dealing with grief, dealing with his parents dying, that fucking sucks. Like, mm-hmm. that's one of the worst feelings ever. But, like... This is also an Adam Sandler comedy. So, like, yeah. there's going to be poop jokes and booger jokes and sex jokes and stuff like that. There's going to be jokes. And I'm not saying you can't do it both ways. I feel like you can, like, deal with very serious topics and learn to joke around with that kind of stuff. Again, I have a very twisted sense of humor. I believe you can. But I also think other people aren't really going to connect with that, whether that's because their sense of humor is different from mine, but also because the person attempting this probably doesn't have the uh, skill to really mesh these two very different tones together. You know, like I feel like someone way more talented than Adam Sandler should be tackling grief around the holidays and making jokes about it, you know? Yeah, like I said, legitimately fantastic outline for a movie buried underneath an Adam Sandler comedy. Like, Tonal Whiplash, I think, is this movie's absolute worst problem. Absolutely. Because it can't decide whether it wants to be silly or serious. And it's not like it's impossible to balance those aspects, because when done well, that's how I get some of my favorite works of fiction. Like, Finding Nemo is my favorite animated movie. It has phenomenal emotional beats. It's got the funny jokes. Like It, it has... It strikes a balance. My favorite movie of all time is The Martian because of how well it can balance, um, like balance, like um, someone going through a severely tough time mentally with some like genuinely good levity. Yeah. Uh, but here they just they just don't do that well at all. They don't know how to space those out. They want to have both like in the same scene, like. Uh, uh, trying and failing to have you laugh 
while trying and failing to make you sad. Right. Exactly. It can't. It can't do either well, and well, that just makes it double the failure. <laughs> yeah. And twice the pride, it, double the fall. <laughs> it's a case where, like, I don't hate this movie, but I also completely understand why a lot of people do. Like, I look at all the criticisms. Yeah. And like, yeah, you're right. Even if they don't bother me as much personally, you're not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, you know what? I completely get that. There are plenty of movies out there that like, I also agree are fucking terrible, but they didn't insult me as much. Like, I think of uh, that Netflix Texas Chainsaw movie, like people fucking hated that movie like a lot. Like they said it was like one of the worst things they'd had ever seen. And I agree. It's bad. Like it's a Texas Chainsaw sequel. Those are fucking like miserable to get through. They're so bad. But I think the reason I didn't hate it as much as other people did was because I had kind of already seen the other Texas Chainsaw sequels and those get abysmal. So like, it was just a case of like, I just don't, I, I understand the criticisms, but I'm not as passionate for them. So I completely agree. Like, yeah, yeah there are those times where like, you know, you just watch something and you're like, all right, like I get it, but I can get at least something out of this. Whereas I guess people couldn't get that out of this. So yeah. there are plenty of other movies fall under the same umbrella. Like, I'm not going to act like um, any of the the hate for like stuff like the Emoji movie or Chip and Dale is unfounded. I just don't... I, I can't imagine feeling strongly enough about those movies to mm. hate them. Yeah. I mean, I hate those movies, but like I completely agree. Like Sometimes you just don't want to even watch them because, like, well, what's the fucking point? Like, Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, they're terrible, oh, they're but so I, terrible. I don't... I have no vitriolic hatred for them because I can at the very least clown on them and it's yes. funny to oh, do yes. so there's oh. other movies like like uh, me and my friends we watched ready player one last year that was a movie so miserable that uh even in the discord call clouding on it we got nothing out of the experience oh dude i know that feeling all too well which is why like i try to make sure the movies we watch in discord are not like any joe schmo like regular movie like there it needs to be special what we're watching because otherwise it's just fucking boring like ugh. yeah yeah <laughs> no i totally get that but then again sometimes i'm just like oh we're gonna watch this because i feel like it and then i just torture people yeah. by showing people different and then movies. and then i get you to show everyone the hour-long Chuck E. cheese movie and don't even turn up for it oh listen hey <laughs> Chuck E. cheese and the galaxy 5000 everybody needs to experience that one <laughs> Like, yeah, now that that's a that's a film where um I will I'll gas it up like I will at Crazy Nights, but I actually do hate this one. <laughs> You'll zoom gas it up. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll zoom gas it. Up. <laughs> oh, classic. Um, well, is there anything else we have to say about a Crazy Nights, uh, Biff? Um, I guess one last criticism I have towards it: the, the pacing of Davies arc going from like. He's he's an asshole. He goes to live with White and Eleanor and does like a complete heel turn over the course of one forty-five second montage, and then uh, and then is back to being an asshole again. Like two minutes later in the next scene, after the other two, yeah, just horribly overstep their boundary. Huh? It's almost like it's the third act breakup. Wait a minute. <laughs> like yeah, oh, true. Was yeah. there a twist villain? The oh, ooh. Man. No, there wasn't a twist villain. Not that I remember. Um, yeah, no, I don't. I don't think there was a twist villain. Wait, no, there was the guy who stole Eleanor's wig. He, <gasps> the, the, that was the the twist. <laughs> that was the twist villain. Yo, we've done it. Yo. We've we've written an animated film from the year twenty twenty three. Good for us. <laughs> Good job, Hell Adam Sandler. Yeah, you were. He was ahead of the curve. <laughs> and there's generational trauma. Does this count as generational trauma? Well, his uh, parents did die. Yeah, that's trauma relating to generational stuff. That counts. Sure, why not? <laughs> we did it. <laughs> you did it, Adam. You you were ahead of the curve. <laughs> oh, great. Awesome. Akin to this movie. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, so I guess to kind of wrap up our discussion on Eight Crazy Nights, I usually like to say like, oh, how does this relate to the collection? So I don't own this movie on any physical media um i watched it for free on tubi shout out to tubi can never go wrong with tubi 
Uh, mm-hmm. lo- I love promoting Tubi. Uh, this uh, this podcast is in no way sponsored by Tubi. I just love the streaming service. It's just so funny to me, that streaming service. But anyway, I watched it on there. I have zero plans to ever own it or add it to the collection. Like I said, I have no passion for this other than negative emotions. So like... <laughs> It's just not so it's it's not one of those so bad it's good films I want to have for the collection. And I love having so bad it's good films for the collection, but this just ain't it, chief, I'm afraid. Yeah, no, that's fair. I'm still going to watch this every year for as long as I can remember to do so. <laughs> but that's not because I like it. I, I don't I can't bring myself to dislike it either. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have no strong Okay, now <laughs> to say I have no strong feelings one way or the other. I have so many strong feelings both ways that they cancel each other out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, if I I don't have any plans to ever rewatch it, like if I ever want to rewatch it, it'll be through either the nostalgia critic review or the eight crazy nights or the best of eight crazy nights references only plays video. Like those are genuinely funny to me. Whereas eight crazy nights is not. Yeah. It's, it's not a, not a good movie. Um, but you know what? We're back in, we're back with a animated Adam Sandler this year with, with, uh, Leo in, uh, not in theaters on Netflix right now, oh, yeah. which I'm actually going to be watching right after our, uh, shortly after this recording is over nice yeah oh, my yeah. friends and i are having a movie night yeah i remember i remember seeing yin said review that and i'm like what is this and then apparently it got its own float at the macy's day parade this year it's like Jesus. <laughs> it just came out like you have to work you have to work up to become a status to be a balloon in the macy's day parade why do you think snoopy's there why do you think greg heffley's there why do you think the boss baby's there it's like you do well, not just, one piece is there yeah you do not just like show up being like hey guys i'm the lizard from leo it's like fuck <laughs> off dude like you do not have the status that bart simpson does get the fuck to the back of the line <laughs> I'll be the, be the judge of that when I watch the when I, I watch the movie. I actually can't tell if people like it or not. I've seen so conflicting, such a conflicting reception on it. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe pff, I don't know. I don't watch Netflix animated films. Uh, that's not true. I've seen a cu- couple. Uh, I'll get to Nomona someday. Um, it's pretty good. Yeah, but is it Eight Crazy Nights good? Uh, in the sense that it's not good, I would I would say no because it is pretty good. <laughs> but is it as epic as the bum bitty 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 bum bum? So, uh, so okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be too blasphemous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on, come on. Well, speaking of possibly Nimona, I don't know. I haven't seen it. Let's talk about a good film, a good animated film. Uh, that being yeah, animation is cinema. Animate, yeah. For once, I actually agree. We, Let's take a break from saying animation is for babies, because it is. Animation is for babies. We <laughs> we hate animation here on this podcast, absolutely. But I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Let's talk about a movie that actually does deserve the phrase animation is cinema uh, associated with it. That being Studio Ghibli's Spirited Away. Um, this is our second Studio Ghibli film we're talking about on the podcast, because... Um, Months ago, I talked about uh, the tale of the Princess Kaguya with Olivia, um, but now we get to talk about Spirited Away, uh, a Miyazaki Ghibli film, because Kaguya was Takahata. This is Miyazaki, so this is exciting. Uh, we get to talk about Spirited Away. Um, so I want to ask you, Biff, like, when did you first come across this movie? Because I can't, I can't, I, I, I don't want to assume this was your first time watching it uh, for the podcast, right? Yeah, no, this is actually my fourth time seeing it in the last, uh, since 2019, I believe. Two times less than Eight Crazy Nights. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the real best animated film on this, t- on today's episode, hmm? <laughs> I'm just, one of them's got Bum Bitty, the other don't. Hmm, suspicious. <laughs> I've not seen anyone making edits of the Spirited Away poster, all I'm gonna say. <laughs> You don't see like uh, Chihiro like throwing a snowball and it says like <laughs> someone make that edit please of like please. Uh, of oh Adam Sandler with Chihiro's haircut <laughs> <laughs> throwing the snowball and the text just says spirited away. It says Neon Genesis Evangelion. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. C- continue. Um, so uh, I I can't remember when I first heard about it. I know that I'm 
I think the first time I heard about it was through Jello Apocalypse's every Ghibli film reviewed in Ten Words or Less okay. video that he did. Okay. That was like my introduction to not not what got me to check out a lot of Ghibli films because I didn't start it until years later. But um, it's what taught me that a lot of them existed because I didn't really watch that many movies back then. Mm-hmm. And and so like when he got to his number one. Uh, he's like, yeah, the spirit of the way that said, you you knew that was coming anyway. Time for the time for the worst movie. Like, okay, I, I I've not seen this. This is lost on me. I, what you've not explained then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh my god. Totally, I, I totally understand now why yeah. it's like that. Because I'm what, what like at the, my first time actually hearing anything about, like descriptive about the movie was when I think it was Schaeferlis's best animated feature winners mm-hmm. uh, ranking. And um, I think I checked the movie out later that year for the first time. I was like, yeah, I really loved it, but I, I don't, I wouldn't quite call it one of my favorites. Then year after, I tried again, um, same same result. And then I think a couple months after that, I'm like, yeah, I, I feel like rewatching this again. And like, it just it clicked with me. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I get it. I, I get it now. I'm like the Danny DeVito kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, um, I get it. <laughs> And then rewatching it um, for this podcast, like yeah, um, I, I have I keep a list of my top twenty favorites of all time, and Spirit Away is uh, firmly on there. Mm, okay, awesome. Yeah, uh, I could not tell you the first time I heard of this movie. I mean, I was I feel like it's one of those like I grew up hearing about because like I was friends with like you know weebs um so like i heard a lot about like it, i never really watched like anime or like any like japanese animation until like i i do want to say like i think uh death note was like the very first like japanese animated thing i ever saw um and that was like 2018 the earliest um and so then you know then you then i start to hear about like oh studio ghibli is like this this huge thing and like you know everybody loves these movies and i do remember this was way before james did his ranking um the reason i've seen all the ghibli films is because of james's ranking um but i remember for some reason i decided to watch spirited away on its own and so i found it on max um and I watched it with the English dub and I watched it and it wasn't really clicking with me. I'm like, huh, like I can see this being kind of likable, but like, man, I'm not really getting like this one of the best movies ever made vibe from it. You know, like, yeah, it was de- definitely similar to you. I was like, I like it, but I don't love it. Um, and this was back when I was like kind of self-conscious about giving something a lower score, something as like huge and popular as this giving a lower score. I was like kind of self-conscious about that. So I kind of heightened my score a little. I'm like, oh, whatever. But like, I feel like nowadays I'm way more confident than that. Um, but I also do love rewatching movies, giving movies second chances. So when James eventually was just like, hey, I'm doing a Ghibli ranking. And we're like, cool, we could use some money. So um, <laughs> we decided. So I decided to, you know, follow along and watch some of these Ghibli films on my own, even though I didn't I didn't volunteer for all of the segments. I, oh, what segments did I do? I think I did. Uh, I definitely did Nausicaa. I think I did Secret World of Arietti. I might have done uh, part of Kaguya. Only one of those I've seen. Or maybe I did. No, I think I did Kaguya. I did. I think I did Kaguya all on my own, and then I did part of Whisper of the Heart. I don't remember. Whatever. I got paid. That's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, uh, but anyway, yeah. So I watched Spirited. Away. So like, I when I was going through all the Ghibli films, I had the I had like the context of Spirited Away. But, like, again, the dub. Whereas, like, with watching all these movies, I decided to watch the sub. So, I'm very much a subtitle person. I prefer watching something in its original language. So, when I eventually got back to Spirited Away, like, after I had seen all the Ghibli films, I was like, you know what? Let me watch Spirited Away again. So, I watched it with... I watched it subtitled, so, like, in its original Japanese. 
And it was like rediscovering the movie all over again. Like I had forgotten certain parts of it. I had forgotten certain story beats and it was in a brand new freaking language. So like it was like a brand new experience for me. And that's when it clicked for me was the second time for me. I'm like, oh, I see now. Um, and then just recently I watched it for the podcast and I'm glad I did like, cause like, holy shit, it clicked with me even more. I'm like, now I see this thing fucking rocks. I love this movie a lot. Um, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. probably not my favorite Ghibli film. Um, but it is the one I've seen the most. So it still holds a very special place in my heart regardless, um, for that matter. Um, but yeah, like it. So one of the things I want to say is that, yeah, I prefer it in its original Japanese, mostly because I feel like uh, Chihiro is just way more likable in Japanese than she is in English. I don't I, actually let's establish that. Did you watch this in English or did you watch this in Japanese? Um, I watched the, the most recent time in English. I mm -hmm. think that's the case for all four times. I can't say for, for certainty because okay. like, the last time I watched that before this year was like two years ago at the bare minimum. So yeah. Yeah. memory's a little fuzzy, but um, I, I think my most recent one was the English dub. Um, and uh, I think I, I have grown a bit more of an appreciation for that one, finding out that Chihiro is voiced by Lilo from Stitch. Oh, yeah. I think I knew that. Yeah. I don't know. I There's just something about Japanese dialogue being spoken in English that's a little awkward for me. Like, yeah. I'm, I much prefer, like, because I don't know, they speak in a way that's, like, kind of cool. But when something I've noticed, and I think I talk about this in my other episode where we talked about Kaguya, but like, I don't know, something about the way something is written doesn't automatically make it sound good when it's spoken. So yeah. when I hear something like that was written in Japanese, but spoken in English, it's a little awkward. Whereas like, if I'm reading something that was written in Japanese, it's being spoken in Japanese, but like I'm reading the English subtitles of it. Yeah, it's a little awkward, but like, I don't know. I can still take it seriously because I know it's being told it's being written and told in its original language. And I much prefer that. Um, but yeah. I, I understand that not everybody, you know, can like, not everybody has the uh, patience to, you know, read out subtitles. I'm, and I'm not saying that to be rude. Like I'm like genuinely some people do prefer dubs. And I mean, people have made entire careers out of like dubbing over stuff in its original language and like giving it, like dubbing it for a different language. Like, and it's not just for English, like, you know, English speaking American movies get like dubs in other languages all the time. And like, you know, that that's fine. Not everybody speaks English. So like, I get it. I personally just don't get anything out of dubs. I would prefer it to be like in its original language. Um, yeah. Yeah. I do think there can be a disconnect sometimes because um, one of the Ghibli films I know I have seen in uh, Japanese, um, or at least like with the subtitled, the subtitles from the Japanese version was when I was watching My Neighbor Totoro on Netflix. Mm. Um, I think like I was trying, I was going through it and trying to decide between subbed and dubbed version um i think at one point i i, I eventually settled on subtitles i want to say but then partway through i thought wait i want to see what kind of differences you get if you have like the english dub with the, the english subtitles from the japanese dub mm -hmm. and there's the scene where like the little sister goes missing and uh i think satsuki's uh the other girl's name is going looking for her um the uh, subtitles were saying like, "Oh, where's she gone? I hope she's okay." Uh, and then the dub had like this tone of, oh, "Where's this fucking idiot gone off to now?" So like tonally, it doesn't always match. Right. Yeah, I can get that. I guess it. it yeah, it is very much a person personal taste thing. Like, yeah. absolutely. But I will say, I think the story of Spirited Away is very much universal regardless like mm -hmm. whether we're watching it in english and japanese like the story itself is very good um you know just this little girl and her parents like coming across this weird fantasy world um uh to the point that you know her parents are like picking out on like 
uh, well, quite literally pigging out on <laughs> fucking eating all this food, and then they turn into pigs, and then she's like, what the fuck? And then, like, hijinks ensue from there. Now she's a fucking masseuse at a spa place, <laughs> and her boss has this big head, and there's all these spirits everywhere, and it's... and her friend in the spirit world is a dragon apparently like you know like the way i'm starting to describe it you're just like what the fuck is this movie but like <laughs> i don't know when you watch it it makes sense um because i just the way it like it, it kind of is spo- it's kind of told in a way that's very dreamlike um I I've brought this up before when talking about movies. Like I love movies that have like a dreamlike sense to them where not everything makes sense. I mean, because when you really get down to it, this movie does feel like kind of nightmarish at times where like, you know, it feels like Chihiro is just in this dreamlike world. I mean, she is in a world full of spirits. So like, that's kind of a heady concept, you know, like, the, there's these characters that just come in and they're just like, oh, that's the river spirit. That's a very highly regarded river spirit. You're just like, how does that work? Or like there's a scene later on when she's like um, riding on. Uh, oh, God, what's his name? Oh, this Haku. Is Haku. Haku. Um, and they're like and she's just like, oh, you're the river spirit of that river I drowned in when I was a little girl. And he's like, yeah, I remember when you drowned in me. And I'm just like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> like, how does that work? <laughs> but like, even though I'm questioning the logic, I'm still interested in what the emotions are uh, conveying, you know, like that. That's the thing about this movie. It's very dreamlike. Like I can kind of forgive it for its lapse in logic because that's not what the movie's focused on. The movie is focused and that's what Ghibli films are so good at. They're so good at just being. I hate to use the phrase because I feel like it's kind of a lazy phrase to use, but like you just vibe with it, you know, like yeah. it's a very vibing kind of movie. Like you're just, vi- you're just there for the vibes. Um, yeah. But like, y- you know, like that's, that's just, but I can forgive it because that's what Ghibli does best. Uh, these vibe kind of movies. Like you're not in it for the story, the plot, like you don't care about the lore of this spirit spa. Like, why does this exist? I don't know. I don't care. She's just working there now. That's just what the movie is now, you know? I think um, they do a great job of, like giving you as much of a handle on this world as you need to. Like oh, um, absolutely. You don't you don't need to understand every little intricate detail like how do spirits work? What are they tied to or whatever? Like there's a radish spirit, is is that attached to every radish in the world? Does each radish have their own spirit? What mm-hmm. what's up with that? But like you get the general gist of like how this specific section of this world works, how this like um, spirit spa place operates, how the, the, the little um, coal demon things that work for Dr. Eggman uh, prov- <laughs> provide heat for the building. That is what he is. Um, <laughs> it's literally just Dr. Eggman. He is Robotnik, yeah. <laughs> It only clicked with me on this rewatch. I love the part where Ch- like I love the part where Chihiro first meets him and he goes, "Snooping as usual, I see." <laughs> yeah, that was that was great. Was great I love, um, very brave of Miyazaki to put that in. <laughs> yeah, like he he predicted. Uh, he, oh wait, no, this this came out in the two thousands. I thought it was older than that. No, no, uh, I was going to say predicted Eggman. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he predicted Eggman. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it's um, it's just like a really immersive world, and you get the gist of what you need to without them going overboard on exposition. Oh yeah, um, oh, yeah. this is very much not uh, a movie where you require a judge to give exposition for the characters. Like, yeah, it it's very clever in how it establishes the world and what it needs to explain and what it doesn't need to explain. It's interesting that we're talking about this because you know the last episode I did was our second Dune episode where me and Puff are talking about the Dune miniseries. Now, Dune is a very, like, heady universe, and there's so much lore to it that kind of does need to be explained. Um, But that's also kind of its downfall sometimes, is when Dune explains far too much and you're left even more confused. I've seen several versions of Dune, and I'm still confused at how the world fucking works. But, like, at least with Spirited Away, like... You know, this is a world that clearly has a ton of lore to it, but you don't need to explain it at all. Like, you can just 
have this one little story be it because, you know, it's not about the lore. It's not about the plot. It's about these characters kind of just experiencing the world, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, it's uh, a very character-driven movie, and I very really like so. that. I think that's why it's one of Ghibli's best, um, just because of how well done Chihiro's arc is, how she starts out so timid, and then you can see both from like how she speaks and how she acts to as well as like how she walks and runs that she's like building uh, her confidence with each little win that feels deserved because of how much she's putting her all into it for her parents, not even for herself. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, that's another thing. Yeah, the because this is a character piece, the main character needs to be interesting, and you need to. Whether you need to, like, understand who she is or you relate to her, like, as long as something positive is happening where, like, you at least either understand or relate to the character, then it's a good character piece. Like, yeah, absolutely. Like, I love Chihiro. I think she's, she's like, she's so obviously a child, but you see, like, the the shit she goes through, you just, you feel bad for her because, like, you know, she's like this... 10 year old girl who just saw her parents TF into a bunch of fucking pigs. And now she has to work a job where she's like, you know, dealing with these shitty fucking customers all day. Like essentially it's really kind of fucked up when you get down to it. Like there's this one customer, the fucking no face, that spirit who's just is mm-hmm. so creepy around her is like, like lusting after, I don't know if it's lust necessarily, but like, you know, he's being weird where like, he's obsessing over her. Like, he's just being like, Hey, I have all this gold for you. And she's just like, I'm not interested in you. Like, it's weird. But... I think that's more a case of like, she's the only person in this bathhouse to like show him genuine kindness. To show like, everyone genuine else kindness, gets on yes. her, gets on her for like opening the door. Like, Oh, no face wasn't supposed to be in here. And like everyone else, when they're treating him nicely, it's only because they, he gives them the prospect of gold. Like I think that's like a big recurring thing in the film. Like people are greedy and they um, suffer the consequences for it. Like Chihiro's parents mm-hmm. uh, eat the food, they um, they turn into pigs. Uh, I, I people... love the scene where like her dad is just like, "Don't worry, dear, we'll pay for this. I, your daddy has cash and credit cards." And I'm like, "What a weird thing to say," because like, because <laughs> like if they were, I don't know, like I think that kind of backs me up in my like dream theory how like you know just the way he says it is so weird how he's just like we have we have credit cards and cash whereas like you know if you're a parent talking to your child you're gonna be like yeah i have the card or yeah i have money like it's fine but he specifically says we have credit cards and cash like he's bragging about it so it's like kind of a weird thing Mm -hmm. but like it enhances the scene nonetheless i think Mm -hmm. I think um, that one was specifically is just a case of like he's saying, oh, it doesn't matter if they have a card reader or not. We're, we're fine with um, however they want us to pay. Right. Exactly. Well, that's the thing is like you can interpret that however you want. It's just a little scene. But like here I am interpreting in like several different ways. I couldn't do that with Eight Crazy Nights. Um, yeah, <laughs> suffice it to say. The interpretation there is Davies an asshole. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. And then to go off the whole gold thing, like No Face can just create gold out of nothing which is so cool like that is such a cool idea because not only does it show like how you know obsessive the other workers are to like you know uh care for this guy because like he can just make gold it also just kind of shows how worthless it is you know like oh he can just make gold out of nothing like it's nothing so it's like okay there's no value to it then but it turns to dirt later on it turns to dirt later on like you know it doesn't matter like and also you know chihiro like he has like this big mound of gold in her face and she's like i don't care like i'm more focused on helping haku at this time like whatever gold whatever like it's just i don't know there's just so many layers to the fact that he can just create gold out of nothing like i just love that i love shit like that like just showing just how valueless it is when you really get down to it you know yeah, a lot of like Chihiro's best scenes come from like her showing that like selflessness, more concern for others. Like she's more concerned about helping Haku than than No Face offering her endless riches. Yeah. I think another one of my favorite scenes in the film is um when she has to like run across that metal pipe. Mm. And like it, it parallels a scene earlier in the film where like she's like easing her way down the staircase and then gets forced to like bolt down it. Yeah. She doesn't have a choice in that matter. But here she is doing like a similarly treacherous run of her own volition, 
that like she doesn't need to do like if she if, if she doesn't do this um then she she's no worse off but like it's because it'll help haku that she'll get to him faster and like she's putting herself in danger to um to help her friend and i think that's like it's just a really nice showing of how selfless she is yeah absolutely yeah totally again not to compare this to eight crazy nights but like <laughs> i feel more for the selflessness of chihiro than i do the selflessness in quotation marks of davy so you know because like it, yeah. it, she generally does feel like she cares about haku like pro- mostly because she like he was the first person that she met in this fantasy world and she feels kind of indebted to him but like you still it still feels like a natural choice she's making she's not making it because she's like, oh, I guess I have to do this. She's like, no, I have to do this. This is what I must do. And I find that far more fascinating. Absolutely. Yeah. I just love the entire cast of characters in this film. Like, Haku is, is Chihiro's like, mentor and guardian, yeah. except when like Yababa brainwashes him. Um, Yababa is uh, such a delightful, um, as close to as an antagonist as you're going to get. But, like, oh, yeah. The boss lady, she's fun. Yeah. She's, um, she's not even really much of an antagonist. She's just a huge bitch. But, like, she's still yeah. a fun character. Like, that's the thing is, like, yeah, you're right. There, there's no, like, specific villain but like i feel like that just makes the movie all the more fascinating like um yeah. the fact that uh we're just following along and we're just seeing these characters interact cuz if there was like a straight up villain you're just like all right you're the villain like i shouldn't feel bad for you blah 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 like i don't know the movie's a lot smarter than that like it it actually takes the time to like show these characters and like you know cuz like um yeah like we were saying like haku he's like this dragon and like he snaps at Chihiro at one point and you're just like whoa but like you know like he's a dragon like he doesn't know no better um yeah Yubaba and Zaniba like her twin sister which by the way they're never seen in the same room together I highly doubt they're sisters like I I don't know how much I believe that I think it's the same person but mm-hmm. I don't know maybe Matt Pat get on it yeah Matt Pat get on it get I know you're filming Fri- Five Nights at Freddy's 2 where you're the main character now of the breakfast guy <laughs> but like I get on it <laughs> um but yeah like i don't know just like the whole um i don't know i just like that there is no villain um yeah. i i know we live in an age where people are starved for villains but i feel like what people are people are kind of getting the wrong uh like lesson out of that where they're just like oh i wish disney would make a movie with a villain again it's like no I wish Disney would make a good movie again. Like, that's the more important part. I don't care if there's a villain in your movie. Like, I want a well-written villain for sure, but, like, I'd rather the movie be good first. Like, you know, I didn't like Puss in Boots The Last Wish because it had villains in it. I liked it because it was a good movie. And guess what? The villains in the movie happened to be really well-written and really entertaining. All three of them were, ironically, the best part of the movie over the actual titular Puss in Boots. But, like, you know, like, at least, like, that was fun. But that's not why I love the movie. You know, it's not the main reason being, oh, there were villains in this movie. Because, hey, Spirited Away doesn't have any villains. And it's a great movie, regardless. You know? Yeah. Well, it has antagonistic forces, but those all come from, like, a character, or, like, I don't, is character flaws the right term to use to describe it? Just like, well, yeah, like, cause like, you know, Yubaba, like we said, is kind of a bitch, but like at the same time, she kind of has to be, she's the boss of this spirit spa. Like you'd be kind of stressed. And she's also raising a child, this gigantic baby. Like you'd be a stressed old lady too, if you were in her shoes, like, and you just dealt with like this fucking garbage spirit who was actually a river spirit. He was just covered in slime and gunk and shit and bicycles like you know (laughs) which i I love that scene of them like dealing with like what they think is like a stink spirit but like it turns out to be a river spirit because they just like clean them um yeah yeah that's a great scene i love that scene even though like even though it's like it's such a beautifully animated film and you think oh now they're gonna deal with garbage but like even the garbage looks kind of appealing you know (laughs) like like, take notes hey crazy (laughs) (laughs) Like, damn it it, it keeps a coming back it's such a beautiful looking movie like, i Absolutely. love the art style the, the environments are just wonderful the character designs are distinct and memorable chihiro's like 
one of the most expressive Ghibli protagonists from like I, I've seen like a quarter of their output, and and she's like up there with. If I know that Lupin isn't a Ghibli film, so that no, I think she is just the most expressive from yeah. what I've seen. Yeah, I lo- like to bring up that whole uh stink spirit scene when like he just passes by, like her face. I love like whenever she like smelt it and like like you see her like body like her vibrate on up. Edge. yeah and then her like v- body kind of vibrates upward because he's just like oh she has like goosebumps it's like oh yeah great so attention good. to detail yeah oh and the score as well the score's so fucking good oh, dude it's, it's like magical i it's the best love word to describe it ghibli scores so much they're so much they're so good yeah yeah i'm right joe Hisaishi did the score. I love this dude. Every when I was like binging all of the Ghibli movies back when James was making the video, I was like, I kept seeing his name pop up. I was like, oh, music by Joe Hisaishi. I think that's how you say it. Hisaishi. Like, holy shit, the dude is so talented. I love his scores in the Ghibli films. Um, but yeah, Spirited Away, like, man, such good music. I I love it so much. Yeah. It uh, it really like aids like the ethereal dreamlike um feeling of the whole experience and absolutely i think that like tone that the first hour or however long sets just makes the contrast hit so much harder when you go from like the whimsical spiritual stuff to like haku shows up and he's bleeding and he's, he's coughing blood and he's like in a violent rage yeah. and like it's such a jarring shift from everything before but like in the best way like showing, I, I guess it shows like how little of this world Chihiro knows and is familiar with. Yeah. I, I suppose. Well, she is like this. She is like a vessel for the audience, where like you're supposed to view this fantastical world from the eyes of this character. Um, but you know, despite being a vessel, she's still a character. Is the other thing is like so like you need to definitely strike that balance where like you're a vessel for the audience viewing this fantastical world. But you're also a character that we're supposed to like uh, see go through an arc. Um, so, yeah, it's just uh, it's just so 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 good. D- controversial take. Spirited away. Good movie. <laughs> you know? that's, that's, a, that's a bold take. I oh, know. But, like, we're the, all about the, the brave the hot question. takes here. <laughs> Better or worse than Chuck E. Cheese and the Galaxy Five Thousand. So you thought I was going to say eight crazy nights? <laughs> listen, don't listen. You 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 threw a curveball. Okay, don't make me choose between the two masterpieces. <laughs> yeah, one of them has zoom gas, one of them doesn't. Mm, tricky, tricky. <laughs> yeah, I I think this definitely stands out as um my fa- or one of my favorite Ghibli films and. I've seen about half of Miyazaki's work, but I think this is my favorite of that half. I think Kiki's Delivery Service might have um, might have taken that spot if uh, if I didn't dislike Tombo as much as I do. He's uh, I, don't, I don't really like him, um, but otherwise, like yeah, Spirited Away and, and Kiki, those are those are my two favorite films of his that I've seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ghibli's weird because like the majority of them I watched, I liked, and I know I liked because I'm like, hey, this is a good movie. But there were those outliers. Every once in a while, I came across a movie and I'm just like, wow that was horrible or there was like ones where i'm just like wow i didn't connect with this at all um weird uh but like spirited away i don't know if i necessarily want to say this is my favorite because i did enjoy other ones i remember enjoying more but like i feel like maybe that was just in a an in the moment kind of thing whereas like spirited away i've seen several times so like i've kind of cemented my feelings on it i love it a lot I just don't know if I'd say it is my favorite for sure. I feel like there are other Ghibli films I need to rewatch in order to really cement my feelings on them. Um, but regardless of that, I know I love this movie for sure. Like a lot. It's really yeah. fucking good. Like, I think it's the only Ghibli film that has won the best animated feature uh, award it at is. the Oscars. Yeah. Well, again, you, I really don't care for the Oscars that much. You know, that's one of the, like, I, it's just such a stupid concept to me. But, like, I, 
if there is if there had to be at least one, I'm glad it's spirited away, you know? Yeah. Like it won against two Disney films. That's the kind of miracle that doesn't happen with with this award that often. Like Spirited Away and Spider Verse are the outliers. Yeah. It's such like, a shame. The fact that they won was it's, it's, miraculous. it's such a shame that we have to be like that, where we're just like, Oh, at least the Disney film didn't win. Cause like I think there are definitely Disney films out there that do deserve the award. But it's just a shame that like the ones that didn't deserve it did get it. So like now we have yeah. to be like, oh, at least the Disney one didn't win. It's just like it's kind of a shame. Yeah. But I mean, I like when the Disney ones that deserve it do get their time in the limelight, but it also it's not as special when it feels like they're just given it by default. You know, that's yeah. why I was so happy with Pinocchio winning last year, because one, I love that movie, and two, it was different. It was something it, it was unexpected. <laughs> Yeah, I, again, it, I've gone over my distaste for the Oscars a million times. I'll probably, probably next episode even, I'll just be like, hey, the Oscars suck. Like, you know, it's, I'm probably never going to stop talking about them, even though I should, because I feel like by giving them this kind of attention, I'm just, you know, making them seem more valuable in that sense. It's like, no, I, I want to devalue the Oscars as much as possible because I don't care for them. Like... I hate whenever people like put so much stock into the importance of the Oscars. Um, just like I hate when people put like uh, so much stock into the importance of Rotten Tomatoes. It's just like, uh, yeah. why are we giving these people attention? Like the reason, the fact that you're complaining about them is giving them even more attention. And I just, I hate doing that. Like, why can't we just give more attention to Spirited Away or Chuck E. Cheese and the Galaxy 5000? Like stuff <laughs> that actually yeah. deserves the attention. <laughs> Yeah, like I, I always, I, I think that's the, the best thing to come out of the Oscars is just the fact that the people who put um so much hard work into their craft get like their public recognition and their time to speak on on what um on, on how the process uh, the process was for them. No, absolutely. And, yeah, like I think I think Miyazaki personally collected his award and gave his speech in Japanese. I don't believe I've seen a translation of it, mm-hmm. but um, I, I, I probably should seek that out because yeah. uh, one of my favorite Oscar speech, I don't go back and watch many, but um, the uh, directors of Wallace and Gromit Curse of the Were Rabbit giving their like, uh, you make a bad film, you do it alone. You make a great one, you do it together. Like uh, That one just resonated with me. I, I like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. Like, I I want these people to be celebrated for putting so much work into their craft. It's like, yeah, I absolutely want that. I want them to be recognized for their hard work. I just don't like, like, putting stock into having these old people vote for them and like, oh, now they're considered the best. It's like, I don't know. I feel like once you've yeah. made your, once you've made your art, like, I feel like that should be enough. Like, hey, I made this thing. And whether or not I see like people resonate with it, you know, I've maybe somebody down the line sometime will, but I don't know if I'll be alive to see that. Like, I don't know. I feel like that's kind of the risk you take as an artist, but what do I know? (laughs) It could, it could be worse. It could be people arguing, equating box office to quality. Oh, don't even get me started. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, well, anyway, Spirited Away, regardless, great film. I think we can all Phenomenal. agree on that. <laughs> um, I don't know. Is there anything else you wanted to say about Spirited Away? I know this wasn't like a huge, like, we're going over every little detail, but like, you know, there's a lot to yeah. Spirited Away. Like, right. you know, right. much like the film itself, it's just, it's just kind of vibes. We, we just, to take each topic as it goes along absolutely I, this will not be the last time i ever see the movie like i will see mm-hmm. it many more times in the future absolutely like that's that's the thing like, well i guess to tie it into the podcast uh i do have it on blu-ray um Ooh. and not just any blu-ray the special studio ghibli g kids steelbook blu-ray of spirited away um so last time when I talked about Kaguya, that was just a standard Blu-ray. This is one of the big boys. This is a, a steelbook of a Ghibli film. Because they did that like a couple years back. They did like a bunch of their movies on steelbook. Um, I remember because like, you know, they put Earwig on, but they didn't put stuff like Only Yesterday or Kaguya on like right away. Oh, it's like, really? 
earwig. <laughs> like, <laughs> is the Ghibli Steelbook the one that you picked the poster for on Letterboxd? I think I no. Think I saw. So yeah. the uh, <clears throat> no, I just chose this one because I thought it looked cool because it was like blue. Like the, they're on it the was river. very pretty. I love the river one. I love river scene where they're like walking on the river and then they're on the train. Oh my god, I fucking love the train scene. Like the, the train scene is so good. <laughs> I think like but uh, Miyazaki. Um, I, I've heard about this technique he has with um with like showing characters going places um he'll like show you the entire journey basically like maybe mm. not like the entire uncut thing but like he'll show you each section of their journey like chihiro going to the um the fields um at the at, like after she gets employed mm-hmm. it doesn't just cut to her there it like cuts to her going downstairs going into kamaji's room getting yeah. her shoes yeah. and then walking out going across the bridge and then to the fields and like it helps get you so much more immersed in it. Like it feels like you're taking the journey with her, I suppose. Absolutely, uh, yeah. And I, I love the. I just love like train scenes. I love trains. Uh, but like, yeah, like just watching like the the countryside go by and like, oh, it's just so yeah. beautiful. It, it's just it's mesmerizing. It's absolutely. Uh, it's just a magical scene. It's a magical movie. Like yeah. every, I don't think there's a single part of it I can point to and say, oh, I don't really like that. Yeah. I think the closest you can really get, it, keeping in mind this is from someone who watched the dub, was yeah, maybe once or twice I wasn't fully sold on some of Yababa's deliveries, and that's about it. Like a couple of dub quirks is all I can say I wasn't a fan of. Yeah. I, I can't even really think of anything I dislike about it uh, to the point that I would... I, I don't know. I, it's just not a five-star film for me. I feel like the five stars <laughs> should be saved for, like, absolutely incredible works of art that I will love dearly over and over again. Like, don't get me wrong. Nine out of ten. Still fucking excellent score, for yeah. sure. Um, but you know, no, knowing people, they'll probably just be like, "Oh, you hated it." It's all be like, "Yeah, yeah I what was it. wrong with it? Yeah. What, what was wrong with yeah. it?" A- absolutely everything. I hated the movie. Nine out of ten. It's yeah. awful. <laughs> like unforgivable. <laughs> people, people put too much stock in number scores. Well, like, they, I can. They have been brainwashed. So. Yeah, true. Like they've, they've <laughs> a six out of, like the most common rating. I'm just saying on Letterbox for Eight Crazy Nights is a six out of ten, which, as we know, is quite good. Even <laughs> you've just been brainwashed into thinking anything less than a four out of five is is, is garbage <laughs> because it isn't literal perfection, which it is, by the way. Well, of course, we just talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, yeah, so I'm glad we talked about the train scene real quick. But yeah, the yeah. Spirited Away uh, Ghibli Steelbook. Uh, very cool. Comes with both the Blu-ray and DVD uh, version of it, uh, which is cool. So if I ever want to watch it on DVD, I have it here. Um, but yeah, no, I'm definitely keeping this Steelbook. Uh, I don't remember when I got it, but it was probably like a year or two ago. Like, obviously, like... It's not hasn't been in the collection that long, but like I, I mean, it's for a movie like Spirited Away. I fucking love the movie, so yeah. I have to keep it. And it's a really cool uh, steelbook. So yeah, so the uh, you were saying the cover for the case is uh, no face, and the actual uh, steelbook itself is like red. Um, so it's a very basic uh, cover. I will admit the steelbooks for Ghibli films are very basic, but you know, like you're, you're not there for the case. You're there for the movie. So like, you know, it could be like, I don't know, like a regular blank steelbook and like, I don't know, a crappy piece of post-it note written spirited away. And the R is backwards. I'd probably still buy it because like, well, one, that'd be funny, but two, like, you know, I'm here to see the actual movie on the disc, you know? Yeah. It, it, rarely do i ever like say that a case matters like well if the case itself is like a piece of shit which steelbooks are pretty fucking airtight i will say um but more often than not i'm i just want the movie on physical media that's the most important thing if it's going to be on a shelf anyway where all you see is the title on the spine then Mm -hmm. i don't think the cover matters too much but sure um, like, I mean, Spirit right Away has got plenty of beautiful posters anyway. It's not d- too difficult to just go and look one up if you want to see a good poster. Oh, yeah. The, um... With the letterbox, you know, with patron membership being like, hey, you can change it to any poster you can find. It's like, yeah, well, 
I mean, let me rant a little about Letterboxd and their fucking bullshit. Um, you know, because <laughs> like uh, we love because like TMDB, you know, there's that site where you can like upload posters yeah. and like, you know, I love uploading like shit. Just like such like like shit posty kind of posters like that's fun. The to helicopter make. one. The helicopter one. My God, they took down the fucking helicopter poster for Enchanted Christmas. <laughs> they well, shot it down. T- they, they shot it down like a fucking helicopter. Well, technically they <laughs> did, but like sometimes you still see it. Like if you go on the actual Enchanted Christmas uh profile like uh page for it on Letterbox, it's the normal poster. But like if you scroll down to it on like the Beauty and the Beast. Uh, page on Letterbox, and you know it says like uh like connected films or whatever like it'll have the helicopter poster on it i'm like <laughs> did you get rid of it or did you not get rid of it first of all l- i'm paying you money Letterbox, so then i can change the poster let me change it to something shitty let me change it to like whatever click poster william's creating like <laughs> oh my god i love those edits i like, know every time i see one of those i love i love the shit posty ones i love his kronk's new groove poster where it's kronk on the empire St- state building and it's saying king kronk like and michael <laughs> eisner is photoshopped in the sunset like that's funny let me have that letterbox like that's, he made one for Spirited Away? I don't think so. Um, get on it, William. I know. Get on it, William. We need Chihiro holding up the click uh, remote. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Or, or no face. I don't care. Like, you know, but like, I don't know. Like, I, I just needed to rant about that because like, you know, it's like, it's. It's my letterbox page. Let me change it to whatever poster I want. And if it's a piece of shit poster, like, let me do that. Like, I love shitty posters. Like, I think that's funny. Like, when I saw yeah. that that was an option you could do for patron where it's like, oh, you can change it to any poster. It's like, well, then give me, like, the uh, the freedom to do whatever I want then. Maybe I want the, um, the Morbius Among Us poster. Like... <laughs> For fuck's sake, give me the choice. Like, stop being the fun police uh, letterbox. Let me have this. Let me have the Morbius Among Us poster or give me death. Like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad that all the eight Crazy Nights edit ones are like so similar to the original that they've probably flown under the radar. Oh my god, yeah. I Yeah, my poster for yeah, uh, eight Crazy Nights is the Neon Genesis Evangelion one because it's yeah. so funny. Like, I just, I love the idea of the Adam Sandler Eight Crazy Nights poster where he's throwing the snowball in the snowball. It says <laughs> Neon Genesis Evangelion. That's funny. Like, uh, it's so good. But fuck I, it. I love that every single review, like, I went to, um, into your, like, light reviews for Eight Crazy Nights just to see what, um, you and all your friends you watched it with thought of it. Yeah. And, like, all of you had a different edit for the poster. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, yeah, Williams had Mario. James, I think, had Undertale. Like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, like, see, this is fun. This is called fun letterbox. You don't know what that is, but it's called fun. Let me have fun on your app. You stupid (laughs) fucking piece of shit app. I hate letterbox, but I still use it every day. (laughs) Yeah, it keeps removing the dog walker films. Like, what's up with that? I want to rate Kikassia half a star, but they won't let me. This isn't, it's literally 1984. I know. And I want to rate Kikassia five stars because that's what it deserves, damn it. Like, oh, it's just (laughs) letterboxed, man. SMH, yeah. but they what, need to get their act together, quite they, frankly. They do need to get their act together, but well, the good news is Spirited Away is a good movie. I think we can all agree on that. I'm definitely keeping yeah. it. Uh, I, I don't know if you said, like, do you ha- collect physical? I probably should have asked that uh, at the beginning, but I, yeah. I don't actively collect. A couple of my friends do, but um, mainly I kind of just watch on streaming services. Uh, the main, main physical ones I have is this uh, like collection of... Um, the first eight or seven or eight Pixar films mm. um, that, that came in this little collection. And I probably should use those again at some point. I grew up watching those religiously, but yeah. I haven't, haven't touched them in a while. Yeah. Uh, well, but yeah, I, I, I just watched this one on Netflix. Yeah. Well, if you were to start a physical collection, would you keep a crazy nights and spirited away? Oh, absolutely! Like I would, I would buy multiple copies of Eight Crazy Nights and give them to like my friends um, <laughs> as a bit like this. It, it's similar to what I do with any time that's like a, one of their birthdays or Christmas. I just buy them uh, Five Nights at Freddy's that they don't have. This oh. would be the the movie equivalent of that. <laughs> Eight Crazy Nights, Five Nights at Freddy's. What's the difference, really? Eight Crazy Nights at Freddy's. Oh Ooh, my god! 
crossover. Matt Pat, get on it. <laughs> oh, well, Biff, I think that about does it. I mean, we talked about A Crazy Nights. We talked about Spirited Away, among other things. But, you know, like that's yeah. as long as we have conversations on the movies, that's all that matters. And it we did. I th- I think this yeah. was a very good episode. Not to toot my own horn, but toot toot. Yeah. Uh, I, I had I had a lot of fun with this. I'll make sure to to plug it on my community tab when it comes out. Nice. So well, now is your chance. Speaking of community tab, please shout out your stuff, dude. Where can people find you? Um, I you can find me on YouTube, on Letterboxd, or God forbid if you use it Twitter. Um, <laughs> those will be those will be links in the description. Um. If if you if you want to hear me ramble about Mario Kart for upwards of half an hour per video, then uh, those those are the, the the big ones that I've done this year. Mm. Uh, Mario Kart has been my sole personality trait for the last year and a half, and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. You can <laughs> see from my profile picture on Discord. Actually, it's uh, it's Saitama in a in a funny little go kart. That's and if you want to see my abhorrent takes on movies, um, then yeah, let, Letterboxd as well. Yeah. Uh, and you can you can compare you can compare the arbitrary number scores I gave and be like, he, he rated this highly acclaimed art film lower than Cars. <laughs> <laughs> he gave what to Gal- <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese in the Galaxy Five Thousand? <laughs> no. Five stars. Five stars. Oh, 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 of course. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You're safe. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for ever doubting you. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Like, I, I would. I would never be a fake fan of Chuck E. Cheese in the Galaxy Five Thousand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, me neither. Uh oh. Yeah. And we will be talking about it next time I'm on this podcast. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I. I would never. I would never dream of talking about Chuck E. Cheese in the Galaxy Five Thousand with anybody else. Maybe William, but you know what? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put my foot down. Sorry, William. You're not coming on this episode. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he'd be heartbroken over that yeah i'm sure uh, but yeah all, all your links will be in the description below absolutely um yeah. but yeah dude thank you for coming on today's episode yeah. to talk about uh eight crazy nights and spirited away two very highly acclaimed animated films <laughs> yeah thank thank you for having me and if there's anything i, I want anyone to take away from this is that uh, Eight Crazy Nights should be what you're seeing in those animation as cinema tweets, but the mainstream media is lying to you. Very true, very true. Enough with Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Let's get some Eight Crazy Nights uh, pre- appreciation over on film Twitter. They know what's up. I feel like up. Eight Crazy Nights might unironically be better than some of the movies in those animation as cinema posts. Well, I mean, it's shit like what, Boss Baby and Trolls? Like, yeah. I, you know what? I, I joke about that. Do people actually gas up trolls and boss baby in like the animation of cinema like tweets uh, main ones i see are, are just like on loop is mario elemental oh, spider verse puss in boots which like i haven't seen elemental i really like the other three to very different extents sure. but like th- there are other animated movies yeah across the spider verse is one of like my top 15 20 favorite films of all time and i'm kind of tired of hearing about it on twitter i mean this is why i left twitter but yeah no i love across the yeah. spider verse it's still my favorite film of the year but like yeah no i i, I like me and william always say watch other films like just ugh, well, yeah. watch heroic times that's a great animated film it's from hungary from the year 1983 yeah i think i saw you post about that oh, I, dude i love I that got film. it on my radar so good. yeah i might try and check it out or watch anything, or watch other things that aren't animated. Watch Muppets from Space, for God's sake. Like, you know, anything, really. <laughs> you watch The Martian 2015. You mm. won't regret it. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, yes. Thank you so much for coming on. And yeah. thank you, for having me. the listener, for listening to today's episode. Uh, if you want to support the show, give a like, give a comment. Listen to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts or on YouTube. That's fine, too. Doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. And always remember, we all heard what happened at the skating rink today. Uh, <laughs> you know what happened at the skating rink today? Bomb, bitty, bitty, yeah, bitty, I, bomb, bomb. Very familiar. Uh, when, when Whitey went uh, to that bathhouse, he got spirited away. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we ended. All right, bomb, bitty, 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 bomb, bomb. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Just for you, I'm